Unfortunately for me, it will be talking about configuration because I missed the uh, break. Um, so I hope that I can learn a bit of what um, was of what is going on there um, in the presentation now. I'll just... yep. oh, sorry, okay. Thank you. Okay, is that good? Yes. Yeah. So, okay. oh. That's it. Please take away if you want to like. Um, uh, if, it, if, it, if it's good for um, if you can't hear me, I can switch the mic and let's try it out. Okay, okay uh, I'm Lasse, and today I'm talking about my proposal for a possible runtime configuration system solution for Riot called the Riot Registry. Okay, first some motivation. Um, why do we need runtime configuration? Um, and what is runtime configuration? Um, maybe if you have an IoT device, uh, sometimes there are some configuration parameters you want to change during the lifetime of that device. And you don't always want to just uh, reflash your whole device and do some static con configuration, but just change them during lifetime. Possible examples should, should be like authentication uh, like credentials, maybe some sample rate of measurement or just some your smart LED color. Okay, um, the problem with Riot right now has no solution for this. So if you want to have a Riot-based uh, IoT application, you always need to come up with your own kind of documentation for it. It's a bit long. Okay, hello? Yeah. Then I try to use this now. Okay. Um, okay, this is my agenda for the day. Um, Start uh, explaining a little bit of the requirements for the runtime configuration registry that we in our team came up with. Um, it's not connected to the session from earlier, it's just what we think is important. Um, then, then I'm talking about um, existing runtime configuration implementation. Uh, it's called the Apache Mineage Config, maybe you already know. It. Uh, and then I'm introducing uh, the new architecture that we are proposing. And then talk a little bit about future uh, starting with the requirements. Okay, um, one thing we want to have is uh, configuration schemas um, that are shared between modules and drivers. So if you have multiple modules and drivers, um, like you can see on the left-hand side, we don't want, in this example, we have a light strip driver, it's <laughs> like drivers. They don't necessarily exist, it's just an example. Um, they all have their own schema that is what we don't want, we would prefer to have a abstract line strip schema that uh, finds the com configuration parameters, and then every, every driver could just uh, have its the sort of schema. Then uh, we also would prefer uh, if the API could have typing information. So um, if you're interacting with the API, it should be visible to the user um, what kind of type it returns for a certain parameter. For example, if you have a color of an LP, you maybe have RGB, red, green, blue, uh, three U and A values, for example. Then, then you would prefer to not rely on uh, uh, just a string-based uh, API or integer path-based API. We would like to have the core API to be pointer-based. So you just have some generated schemas. And then if you want to get some information from your, like read out the configuration values, you could, in the best case, just uh, provide a pointer to some instance and the uh, parameter uh, metadata. And then the uh, API would know, okay, so this parameter, parameter red of a RGB schema um, at this instance, and then it could return you the right pointer, for example. <clears throat> and optionally, we would also like to uh, support a utility functions to also have integer paths or string paths so I could think, uh, various. We want to be able to apply configuration parameters at the same time um, because if we, for example, have multiple parameters, again, uh, example is the RGB light bulb, um, you can see here, maybe we, we want to change it from red to blue. Uh, if you change blue, it becomes purple, and then we change the red value of it 
becomes blue um, during this purple between. But if we are able to change those parameters at the same time, we can change the blue value and the red value at the same time, and then it immediately goes from uh, red to blue. Um, and we also the non volatile storage, it should uh, come back with the color that we set it to last time. Um, and also, we want to be able to integrate well with existing runtime configuration managers like Lightweight like Actor M, maybe write some CLI, some core or IPTG API. Uh, earlier, I learned maybe also integrate uh, core comp. Okay, let's um, talk about some existing implementation. This is uh, Apache MyNet config, it's a config system module for the MyNet operating system from Apache. Um, write very simple API. You have like a get set commit export and open set function. Get set function lets you read and configuration parameter values. And set uh, commit lets you um, apply these values so they are put into action. Uh, with export, we can uh, like uh, export what kind of parameters are available in your system. Uh, don't say it allows you to solve down the reason from the volatile storage. In general, uh, Apache Miner uses a string path to identify integration parameters, so it would be like sys slash dlb slash red, then it could read out your integration parameter, and the values are also usually encoded as strings. So if we um, compare to our requirements, um, the good thing is of this uh, module is uh, already has a ability to persist integration parameters. Um, it has the commit function to transactionally apply changes. Uh, it has a string bar, a string path API. But uh, the reasons why we don't like it to be like this, uh, it only has a string path API, so there's no point in API, there's no integer based API. And also, in usually the question I need, you would uh, have the configuration parameters and module, so they're not. So shared, the configuration structure is not shared uh, between similar drivers. Okay, uh, let's have a look on what I introduced as a new API. Um, in general, my new API is uh, based on the pilot work by Leandro and Jose and some other people. Um, they basically supported the patch and my new config to write. And because it already satisfies quite some requirements, I start as a good start and then just improve, uh, change, make a few changes to adapt it to uh, the new requirements. Um, you can find the pull request in GitHub. Okay, basically, um, this is the structure uh, of our system on the most high level. Um, you have a registry, um, then you have your configuration values lying somewhere in your storage, and then you have um, also your configuration values lying somewhere in non-volatile storage. And then the registry will interact with these, and you will interact with, with the registry to an API. Um, then you could just be an application driver, taking with the registry or some configuration management tool. Uh, I've differentiated the configuration management tools between path-based configuration management systems that would just like map to the path structure if you use a string path or integer path and just uh, just like copy this structure, how how our tree or configuration tree in the field. And we also have um examples like Lightning like MTM. Lightning like MTM has their own object models definitions, they have their own IPs, so you would write a mapping uh, between those. Okay, this is uh, uh, all the components of the new registry. In the blue box here in the center of the large box, um, this is the API. Um, in the green box here, you can see the core API, which has similar functions as the my uh, get set export. They basically do the same thing. Uh, can add a namespace or add some uh, instance of a schema for the driver. And then below, you have the optional storage API. If you want to persist your data, you can use it. And you also have some uh, utility functions to convert. Uh, for example, a pointer to a schema or a pointer 
uh, to the schema instance uh, to some um, streamline digital paths the other way around. And then outside of that API, you have um, your namespaces. Um, right now, we have, for example, the system, the app namespace, the system namespace should contain all the configuration schemas that uh, write itself is going to provide out of the box. And then in the app namespace, for example, you could just uh, register your own configuration schemas for your custom application. Um, and then here at the bottom, you can see the um, storage implementations that uh, could, could be provided as a external dependency. Um, those are the storage backends uh, because uh, the right registry itself um, doesn't really uh, tell how uh, your, your configuration parameters are supposed to be written to storage. Um, so you can just have, have an interface around here and then it just can. Starting uh, with expanding the namespace, um, already said a few things about it. Basically, um, it's just uh, it's a it's a separation between the system and the app namespace, for example, uh, to prevent name naming flashing in the future, uh, naming conditions, and it just contains an array of schemas, have a, has an idea and a name, so you can uh, work with string with the interface, uh, path based API also. Um, so what is a configuration schema? Um, basically, uh, it holds the information of what configuration parameters are available. Uh, so it has a, an array of parameters, and parameters are here. Um, they just have the information. What is the type name? There are string names, also an entity ID, so you can uh, identify them also with the string or integer pass. Um, and we also have groups. Uh, groups itself, again, can contain groups or parameters, so you can kind of build the tree of how you structure your configuration. Uh, yeah, and then inside of the schema, we also have a list of schema instances. So if you have a driver and you want to uh, use a configuration schema to uh, provide one configuration, you would uh, create an instance and then register it at the registry, and give the registry would just put it inside here, so you can find it. And there's a mapping, mapping function um, the function, um, the use of the function is you uh, give it a parameter ID. So, for example, if you want to change uh, the parameter RGBD uh, red, um, then you give it that and the, the schema instance. And then inside of the schema instance is, for example, a struct that contains the actual primitive values, um, uh, like the unit A value and the void pointer here would be the output, output. So you could um, call this function and then you get as an output the pointer to the actual point in storage where your parameters lie. So you then can either read them out or change them. This is mostly just happens internally. Uh, okay, for the schema instance, uh, already explained a little bit. Um, most important field is this it has a data field. Uh, that just contains the struct that is uh, different for each configuration schema uh, and just contains the extra values. And then it has a commit comment function. So if you have a driver and you implement this schema, um, you need to, the most important thing is to implement the yeah. init callback. So, when, so in this, this way, the registry can tell your driver that configurations have changed. Um, you have a scope field that tells you like, uh, did the whole schema change, or maybe just some group uh, should, be, should be applied, or maybe just only if you just want to apply one parameter, because only that parameter should be changed. Um, yeah, if you want to change parameter group, you just also can provide that ID. Okay, let's talk about the storage. So the interface for the storage backend um, contains a load function. Um, this function is, uh, takes the storage instance as an argument. The storage instance has some metadata, like, for example, if you use DFS, maybe you would provide a mount point um, and use it internally. Uh, and then also, if you give it a um, 
the legacy will give that storage a um, public function. Uh, so internally, the storage would then um, look for configuration parameters that it can find on the storage that's uh, safe, and then call this function to give uh, the information back to the registry. Uh, the safe start and safe end function are to, for example, initialize uh, your, your storage and be initialized to the after, uh, before and after the safe operation. So you don't always like in every safe operation, you like initialize, 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 set up performance. Um, yeah, and, and internally, this safe function then um, gets a pointer to the storage instance or the mount point that's informating. Uh, a pointer to the schema instance, uh, the configuration schema parameter pointer, and the registry value. So, if you have these three informations stored on your storage, you uh, have all you need to tell the registry what parameter is it, what is the instance, what is the value. How you store it depends on what you want. You could also just start using the string path or extra path structure and divide it from there. Or you just saw the point. Um, okay, let's talk about the point tag. Um, yeah, we have get set from the export as said earlier. Uh, the function to add a uh, namespace to a registry or register schema instance. Um, starting with get, um, yeah, if you call get, you basically just provide the instance, point it to the instance, point it to the parameter schema metadata. And then just a uh, output pointer for the value. Then the registry would call the, this kind of mapping function in the schema uh, with this data and find the pointer to your value and return the pointer. So then you can access your value. The set function is pretty much the same, except um, you provide new values and then the registry will update the value like that finds it. The commit function, we have all the yellow boxes are basically the registry API function. Um, so you can call, call them from different levels in your tree, for example. Uh, if you want to commit your full registry, um, you can just call it registry commit, then it will call registry commit namespace for every existing namespace, uh, and then registry commit schema, schema, and so on until it's here. Registry commit instance. Um, the commit callback can differentiate already between instance uh, group or parameters. So then, depending on what you need, they would call the commit function with a given information. The register export is similar, um, except that the register export doesn't just at the end call export, but um, every level of the tree, application uh, tree, would uh, be exported by calling the export function and then providing, this is a namespace, yes, okay, it's namespace, and then providing the configuration namespace, my point. Um, okay, let's go on with the storage. No, no, what happened? Oh, yeah, 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 that's correct. Um, okay, starting with Rex Hello. Um, if you call the Rex Hello function, and tell me it will just uh, call the load function of your storage backend. Right uh, providing storage instance and uh, a load callback, then the storage backend internally would look for configuration parameters and then give them to the load callback. Uh, and then the registry has information and can buy them where you need some. The save function uh, is a little more granular, <laughs> also just like the export and commit function. Um, very uh, narrowly decide what part of your registry configuration tree you want to say to storage. And depending on what you do, you call the given function. Internally, the say function just calls the registry export function and just uses the storage backend save function as the export callback. Because the export callback would then just find all the parameters and call the export callback. The storage function is a little bit simplified because the API is exactly compatible, there would just be a in between. Okay, let's uh, talk about uh, possible integration uh, for an external management tool. In this case, Lightning to M. So the idea is um, 
uh, already know a little bit about that when I came from uh, the Anderson. So uh, I don't get too much information, but um, there's this kind of task, integer task, like I am, the object ID, this is for the RGB LED. Then this would be the instance zero in this case, and then <laughs> the first uh, property. And like the Lightroom game, for example, stores uh, the color of the light bulb as a hex string. So you have F F0 there. For example, um, then our implementation right could just be the Lightroom game sign looks okay. Do we have an empty table for this object? No, just say, of course, yes. Um, let's go to the red string. And then um, we will find, oh, okay. Uh, the, the, the this uh, model is not the correct the same format as the registry, so first we convert it uh, to to the format that is compatible to the right registry. Uh, so we convert the the, the hex string to uh, because our maybe our scheme and the right registry is three point eight values, which is converted to twenty five zero twenty five, and then it's called the registry set. Then give the pointer to the to, uh, to be LED red parameter, green parameter, blue parameter, instance zero, and then uh, you provide a value as an argument like for red by uh, green zero, and then for blue again. Then since left and gem doesn't have a commit function, just like if it says uh, change the parameter, then they should also be applied. Um, we would just call the commit email function or um, provide the schema. And then the third single sign is scheduled to a form. Let's talk about stuff that can still be improved and uh, more like future work. Um, currently, uh, all the configuration schemas, I just write myself the full SQL. The idea is to have more like some, you write the configuration schema in a JSON or YAML format. Then you have a code generator who could generate you all the C code. Uh, and then inside of the driver, you only need to write some C code to use the instance. Um, then we also want to have some more semi configuration management implementations. Right now, I've got written HCI. Um, yeah, and then we need to uh, define all those system configuration schemas for all the use cases and integrate them into the virus. Of course, this uh, future work now has changed since um, we also need to do some more collaboration with Fabian on um, and some ground. But um, when I did the presentation, I wasn't so no one can uh, Yeah, that's the book. Um, you can find the book in Rikas and Gisha, which is QR code. Um, any question? Uh, Maybe I got a bit confused, but you say you can identify the instance just by the Sorry, I... so you can identify the instance just by the plot that you don't need any any path, but then how do you move back if you have uh, if you want to set the second thread LED uh to a certain value, how do you how do you find that uh, in the in the registry? Um, in general, uh, you, you know the configuration. Uh, in, uh, do you have to find the configuration team because that uh, in the storage uh, in your program storage, uh, and you can just access the instance here and then just uh, go into the list. Where do you get this pointer from? Uh, it's just. Uh, Available. And you can just import the header file and then you just get it. Because the configuration schema, like, uh, it's just, uh, it, just, it relies on the program storage uh, for every schema just one time. And then for the drivers, they just register those instance tracks additionally inside of the list. So there's a global variable for configuration object source of that. It says that the global variables mentioned. I think I remember that I saw in the, in the storage internal storage API 
um, that that also gets just past the the instance identifier. So if yeah. I understand correctly, that can work for as long as the firmware is the same. Um, but <laughs> is there any plan of, of having this usable across firmware upgrades? Yeah, that's why we additionally also still have this kind of um, utility functions to already have every converter to extreme manager paths. So if you implement your storage backend, you could have inside the storage backend, you get those pointers. And then for the utility function, then you just get string path, for example. And then you can also just put it into some database and use the string path. So, so that, 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 that's cool because that even means that my backend can be efficient with logins and I'm not in firmware upgrade or just as soon as I'm doing a firmware upgrade, I could, the backend could start storing things. In a in a in a string based or integer yeah. based, so you can like, choose what makes sense. Yeah, thanks. So the schemas I identify by their ID, and uh, so the ID must be unique. Yeah. Or is yeah, the idea is the ID of the schema should be unique within its namespace. So the schema is in, for example, the right schema is supposed to be in the sys namespace, and then the idea should be in the case. I think that's it with questions. Thanks a lot. And that concludes um, the last block of presentations.